Hello, everybody. This is Nina, and this is the virtual weed walk. In this sessions, we would talk about weeds, but since both weed and us occupy the same space, that is the Mother Earth, we are going to talk about the awesomeness of our surroundings, observation, our culture, tradition, and the discovery surrounding our us. and of course weed which is nothing but nature resisted or nature ignored till now though we cannot respond to your question in real time please do send your suggestions feedback or questions at edibleweedwalk@oroville.org.in or you can also send it at coloringbook@oroville.org.in Remember, this is the spelling of the coloring. It's your L O R I N G, no U. Okay, today we may veer and touch upon topics such as uh, importance of observation. Rest assured, it is linked to the weeds, and we will get back to the weeds. If nothing, it will hopefully be a nice story session on a lazy afternoon. Let me start with the house I grew up in. It had a large lawn. In that lawn, our old gardener Mali used to grow the usual snapdragon, dahlia, calendulas of the world during the cooler months on the beds. But he was too old, and the area was a bit too large for him to manage. So there was a part of the lawn, towards the end, quite a bit of area where the mango tree rooted was left for the wild. that was my area of hangout me my dog and cat were forever dreaming and exploring there no it did not make an expert make an expert of me in anything at all i often located um my i often given my own names to these plants because i did not know them and i thought uh, they were my friends but i could notice them the greenness has a smell if you have noticed and if they are wild the smell is different they change with the rain and without i was familiar and comfortable with them i could notice the ants carry eggs before the rain long before the weather forecasts lets you know that i knew that the adults did not notice but there was a family of mongoose that lived under the huge madras thorn tree or pithacholybium dulce i did not know the scientific name of the tree then but we had only one immediate neighbor and i noticed that they knew how to eat them turned out that they were from chennai originally and here that fruit is eaten Years later, I found them being sold in Pondicherry. The fun did not end there. Just before the rains, when the cloud rumbled, I used to often run to the middle of the lawn and lie down as if to occupy the front page of the theater where the film is about to start. Come to think of it, maybe my love of watching movies started from there. I used to watch. amazed the cloud gather up and burst into rain how the grasses looked and smelled then much to my mother chagrin i must add i was lucky to be in the middle of the metro city and still have the experience of the nature and the wild from then on irrespective of where i am in a city or not in my country or elsewhere i always when i took up a walk or among the green a whiff of nature a sight of a bird a chipmunk made me aware of the nature aware of my friends and made me feel at home you know what you can get this experience also you do not need to return to your childhood if you are by age not a child anymore you have to meet up with the child inside you and explore give it some time do not be impatient remember the exercise we did during the last podcast 
where we, you know, kept quiet for a little while. And most of you most likely have desired to be in the nature. We all hold nature in our heart. You are nature. You have to take time to experience it with your senses, that is with your body. That's the main thing. If we were not in the lockdown, I would have recommended come for a weed walk. But if you are an expert weeder already, can we call that about those of us who are seeking and learning about weeds? If you can think of another term, let me know. For the time being, I am using the word weeder. If you are an expert weeder already, great. But even otherwise, prepare yourself. Take slow walks. Notice around you the tiny little butterflies that sits on the flowers that suddenly came up after the rain. Have you noticed that there are these, you know, more blue colored flowers that suddenly cropped up? Those tiny little butterflies are called lesser lepidoptera. Many of our pollinators come to our desired plant because of the weeds, because the weeds attracts them first. It's like kind of a little hook, a little sugar you put in your uh, fermentation before, you know, it gets to your main uh, pulp or the, you know, the orange peel. They first eat the sugar and weed flowers are often act as those attractive little things uh, which pulls all the pollinators and then it comes to your plant in your garden or farm. For most of us, um, before we became weeders, weeds are those green masses that remain mostly away from our attention or something that often even drew our irritation since we cannot get rid of them. But one we give some attention, they flourish in front of us. Some we find are edible, some are medicinal, but even those which we do not know, cannot, you know, cannot use per se, they fill us, fills us with joy. I mean, have you seen the details in them, the absolute freshness in them? So what are weeds? Seems like we call something weed when we ignore or fail to recognize them. So it tells us more about us than the plant, isn't it? I was reading the other day uh, some research paper on a particular weed. I had gathered a few serious paper on that plant and in one of them the weed was growing in a very polluted soil. It actually was, um, the soil was um, kind of infested with uh, oil licks. I mean, that's pretty serious, right? So even then, the plant was not termed as wheat because the, it, was, it was for a use. So the plant was designated as a potential use in bioremediation. Re remediation. bioremediation means treating the soil and nursing it back to health. So this particular weed, what we generally call weed, actually had the power of that. In another paper, a more conventional agricultural paper, the weed was deemed to be noxious and undesired. It is taking away the space that you had allocated for your crops. It was really a bad guy. But it was the same exact plant, different attitude. Both provided inform important information about the plant, but also about us. I love that in one paper, which considered it as undesirable weed, found out that it finally quoted because they found out that uh, the properties were actually awesome and medicinal. So it finally had to kind of admit that weeds become useful to us when we learn to use them. So basically, something which is weed around you, soon it may not remain weed anymore because you would know them you'd know their name, you'd know when they grow, what plants, what um, little insects it attracts, uh, the season it grow, and how do you uh, propagate them. In all these characters, they are not weed anymore. 
However, to know about them, we need first to observe. Trust in your observation and follow up your query. That's reading. That's connecting with nature and that's science. I've been studying this weed called Cardius Perbum helicacabum, our good old balloon vine. Locally, it is very well known. It's called Mutakatan Kirei. It is also in my coloring book and I had researched about it before. Yet, as I put more attention before posting on the Facebook page Edible Weed Walk, I discovered more information about it. It's awesome. I'll share with you next time or maybe you can just check it out in the next Facebook post. There is little YouTube video too for those who are not familiar which one, which vine I, we are talking about. Check them out and I'll see you next time. Stay well, stay safe and observe.